musical theater, it's the performers that usually get all the attention. So sing. Think of you back in Soweto. But during this early rehearsal for the new musical Sazatska, all eyes are on the man in the shadows. You took all of that love and heat and you put it all in the song. Disgraced theater mogul Garth Drabinsky quietly observing what many see as his attempted comeback. This is seen as Garth's potential comeback. Oh, it is. Do you see it as that? Oh, it is. Well, 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 well fact, that is factually correct. There's, 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 no, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. I think it is. I hope it is. I think it is. I think it is. It, uh, he, um, he sees it. I ignore it. Uh, it <laughs> I, I never took... Uh, a position that I left the entertainment business. The rise and fall of Garth Drabinsky rivals the drama of any of the shows he put on. A polio survivor, Drabinsky was just 29 when he co-founded the Cineplex theater chain. By the 90s, his company Live Ant became synonymous with lavish stage productions. The Phantom of the Opera in Toronto. Then Broadway, Kiss of the Spider Woman, Showboat. Tell me I'm crazy, maybe I know what's up, I'm Ragtime. Unprecedented for a Canadian company, Live Ants shows got 19 Tonys. But then it all came crashing down. In 1998, Live Ant filed for bankruptcy, claiming a debt of more than $330 million. In 2009, Drabinsky and partner Myron Gottlieb were convicted of fraud and forgery for cooking the books of Live Ant for years. It's estimated the investors lost close to half a billion dollars. Originally sentenced to seven years, he served 17 months. Since being paroled in 2013, he's been laying low. I've obviously, uh, you know, had to deal with issues and I have dealt with them. And uh, I'm just moving ahead with the rest of my life. He was found guilty. He, 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 he went to prison. He did his time and he came out and he's getting on with it, which is great. There was never any, ever any question whether or not he was a brilliant producer or not. That was never, ever, ever a question. Except normally, a producer handles the money in the theater world. In this case, Drabinsky has only been allowed to handle the creative side. Fortunately, his collaborators say that's exactly his strength. Years after his downfall, he still seems to have Broadway's A-list on speed dial. Top artists like Hamilton costume designer Paul Tazewell have traveled from the U.S. to work with him. This part. Yeah. Definitely. Songwriting team Richard Maltby and David Shire have won both Oscars and Tonys. He knows, for example, that the key is an emotional center that other people might miss. That if you don't find that, you won't have the story. It's very comforting to work with him. He's very, very hands-on, but he's not, but he respects artists. If he has hired you, you are by definition the best person on the face of the earth to do that job and and he treats you like that. There is someone in everyone's life who changes everything they've ever known. Someone like Madame Suzatska. In 1988, his company produced the movie Madame Suzatska with Shirley MacLaine. The story of the eccentric Russian piano teacher and her friendship with an Indian prodigy stuck with him. But he knew changes had to be made to make it resonate more with an audience 30 years later and make it work as a musical. It is essential you have enough time to unlearn bad habits and I do not teach for money. 
Now, Suzatska is a tale of a Warsaw ghetto immigrant in Thatcher-era London and her friendship with a talented young pianist who fled South Africa's apartheid. Broadway actress Victoria Clark jumped at the chance of playing the title role. What also resonates with me about the timeliness of this piece is about the racial strife we're still experiencing in the world and the lack of, especially in the U.S., our country's lack of finding a solution. And I think it really does begin with taking the time to get to know someone and understanding each other. And that's what this piece is about. But for some, the very story of Suzatska makes it a questionable vehicle for anyone's comeback. TV producer and filmmaker Barry Average worked with Drabinsky for years, then directed the unauthorized documentary about him called Showstopper. This business attracts charlatans. Needless to say, Drabinsky was not a fan. Garth is a risk taker. Garth wants to be the guy that sort of came out of prison, you know, spent some time there reading and studying and, and philosophy and finding religion and saying, you know what, it's a new world out there in this Trump era, and this is the musical of our time. We'll see. Then there's the matter of how the audiences will respond to Drabinsky himself. His critics are still out there, some online claiming to be the people whose money he took. But Drabinsky says among regular theater goers who have come to the previews, things are different. Tell me uh, in terms of how the public perceives you, Garth Drabinsky. Uh, especially the hometown crowd here in Toronto. You know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I, I, you know, I don't hide in the theater. There are dozens of people who walk by me every night. They know who I am. And they've been fantastically generous in their response to me and very kind in the process. Never settling for less, Drabinsky wants to take his Suzatska from Toronto to Broadway, just as he did with his musicals in his heyday. But for the time being, he faces an outstanding arrest warrant from criminal proceedings in the United States. If the show goes to Broadway, where will you be on the opening night? I'm not sure yet. A little bit of suspense on that one. Well, yeah. I can't really talk about my, uh, my private uh, discussions that I'm having. Uh, uh, between Canada and other places, and uh, when I'm ready to talk about it, you'll be the first to know. A master of suspense, big drama, and grand finales, banking that he can still fill those seats with a story of two refugees finding friendship, and an equally dramatic tale of a theater world exile who hopes that in the glittery world of musicals where all things are possible, why not a second chance? Diana Sumanag-Johnson, CBC News, Toronto.